Hello everyone, Foxy here, and welcome to Mostly Mental. Today, I'd like to step out of my comfort zone and talk about something practical, namely how transfer functions are used to model sound. And because applied math is decidedly not my strong suit, I called in an expert. Hello, I'm the expert. Julian is a technical sound designer who does audio for video games, primarily virtual reality titles. In particular, he's the lead sound designer behind the recent hit game, I Expect You to Die Too. He's also a longtime friend and an all-around great guy. He'll show you how transfer functions get used in sound design, and I'll explain the theory behind it. Thank you for being here. Now, why do we care about transfer functions? So, transfer functions model how audio works in the real world. And when I'm working in VR, I want to emulate the real world as much as possible. For example, if I were to take something like this radio and notice that I'm in kind of this larger, more echoey, most likely room, I would assume the radio to be more echoey as well. In similar things, if I were to move the radio further away from me, I would assume the audio to feel more distant or sound more distant. Also similarly, if I were to move the speaker away from me, I would assume that the audio would feel more muted and like the speaker is facing away from me as opposed to towards me. So basically all of this comes from and is related to the transfer function. In Julian's example, we have an input signal, that's the music being played, and an output signal, the music as you hear it. We'll call those X and Y, respectively. We want a tool that lets us get from X to Y, and it turns out the best tool for the job is what's known as a transfer function. The transfer function is the ratio of the Laplace transforms of y and x. Okay, but what's a Laplace transform? If we have a signal, we can represent it as a wave of some sort. But that might be messy, so it's helpful to break down a complicated wave into simpler signals. The signals that we can hear are sine waves like these. And a sine wave is itself the sum of exponential functions. They have imaginary exponents, but that's okay. So really, we can break every signal down into exponential functions, possibly with complex exponents. Intuitively, the Laplace transform is a measure of how close every possible exponential function is to a given signal. So, this sine wave should be similar to, say, e to the i t. To rigorously capture that intuition, we need a more formal definition. And we define the Laplace transform as L of f is this integral from 0 to infinity of f of t e to the negative s t dt. For example, if we apply that to an exponential function, e to the at, we get the Laplace transform is 1 over s minus a. Plotting that as a function of s, we get this pole stretching off to infinity at s equals a and falling off quickly nearby. And if we apply our Laplace transform to a sine wave, we get 1 over s squared plus 1, which looks something like this. It has poles at i and negative i corresponding to the e to the i t and e to the negative i t in the formula for sine. So if we have an input and an output signal, x and y, their Laplace transforms tell us which exponential functions they're made of. If we divide L of y by L of x, we see how those exponential functions are transformed. And since every signal 
is made of those same exponential functions, that tells us how every possible signal will be transformed. And all of that is captured in the transfer function. That's a lot of theory, so let's see how we can put it all into practice. Let's start with distance. This is a somewhat larger space, so it'll be a good space to showcase this. First, let's start with an experiment. Let's say I take a sound that I can consistently fire, like this dry fire of this crossbow sound, and I move it further away and closer to myself, and let's notice if we hear anything. So, what I notice, one, the obvious is that the volume is getting a lot quieter as we move further away, but the other thing is that we are losing the low and the high frequencies the further we get as well. That's to emulate stuff in the real world as, as we get further away in distance, we lose our low and high frequencies. To kind of showcase this in another thing, let's say I take this nice John Juniper Productions cue sheet and drop it right next to myself. When I do that, it's pretty loud and proud. It's pretty clear that this is right here. If I were to drop it all the way over here, though, it sounds significantly quieter, not just because of the volume going down, but also because we're losing those low and high frequencies. To better explain low and high pass, let's say I have this sound. If I apply a low pass filter, meaning only the lower frequencies are allowed to pass through and allow our ears to hear them, it sounds like this. If I reverse it and add a high pass filter, meaning only the high frequencies are allowed to pass through, it sounds like this. Now, if I were to combine the two and play it, there is a sense of distance that starts to develop. What does that look like mathematically? To adjust the volume, we just multiply our input signal by a constant. And it's not too hard to show that the associated transfer function is just that same constant, scaling all frequencies equally. Next, we have the low-pass filter. We want a transfer function that doesn't affect sine waves with low frequencies, but removes the ones with high frequencies. And since sine waves are the sums of exponential functions with imaginary exponents, that tells us what the transfer function should do along the imaginary axis. We want the value to be 1 when the frequency is close to 0, and to fall off to 0 as we get further away. In practice, we don't want such a sharp cutoff. It's better to have a smooth transition. And we've actually seen a curve that looks like this somewhere already. It's a slice through 1 over s that doesn't pass through the origin. So to put that slice on the imaginary axis, we shift this surface by some amount a, which tells us how sharp the cutoff will be, and then we scale to give this peak height 1, which gives us a transfer function a over s plus a. In a very similar way, the high-pass filter, which removes the low frequencies, should look something like this. And that's just our low-pass filter flipped over and shifted back up a unit. So the transfer function is 1 minus this thing, which gives us s over s plus a. How does this let us attenuate a sound? Well, we take the Laplace transform of our input, multiply by a constant to adjust the volume, multiply by b over s plus b for the low pass, and by s over s plus c for the high pass. 
And then we take the inverse Laplace transform, which gives us our output. That's how we can do attenuation using transfer functions. Another aspect of audio that I like to play with a lot is reverb. Based on the size and shape of a space, you expect the objects and life within it to sound a certain way. I can showcase two different spaces in I Expect You to Die 2, one of which is the workshop that we've been in before. This is a pretty large space, maybe not overly large, but you would expect it to have somewhat of an echo to fill how large this space may be. So if I were to showcase that, Chilling. So, if a space is particularly reverberant or has a good amount of echoes, we would call it wet. If it doesn't, and it's a much smaller space that doesn't echo that much, we would call that space dry. If I were to jump to a different space, like this one, we would expect it to have a lot less reverberation. See? How can we model an echo? At its simplest, an echo is a sound repeated, but softer and with a bit of a delay. Putting that into symbols, we get y of t is x of t, that's our original sound, plus some constant for how much softer the echo is, times x of t minus some delay, t1. If we take the Laplace transform of both sides and do a bit of algebra, which I'll leave as an exercise for you, we get that the transfer function is 1 plus a e to the negative t1 s. Of course, sounds can bounce more than once. That echo may itself echo off another wall, which would give us another term here, b x of t minus t2 which corresponds to another term in the transfer function. That's b e to the negative t2 s. Or our sound might echo back and forth forever between two parallel walls. That would mean that both the delay between bounces and the decrease in volume are constant, which gives us y of t is x of t, plus some constant times x of t minus t1, plus a squared x of t minus 2t1, plus a cubed x of t minus 3t1, and so on. And that gives us a transfer function of 1 plus a e to the negative t1 s, plus a squared e to the negative 2 t1 s plus a cubed e to the negative 3 t1 s, and so on. And this is a geometric series, so it simplifies to 1 over 1 minus a e to the negative t1 s. And all of this analysis can get more complicated depending on the shape of the room. There might be corners or curved walls, or we may have whatever bizarre geometry we like. But the key idea here is that all of that complexity can be modeled with a well-chosen transfer function. To put it all together, I'm going to play a snippet of the game. Let's see if you can hear anything that we've talked about previously. Ah, my eyes! I've got a lock on the 
Engage it! Block the exit! I'm on it. I'm covering their left. I think that's the last of them. I lost sight of the Prime Minister in the chaos, but I think he made it out. Uh, no sign of the Fabricator either. Well, let's debrief back at the van. Lots of fun and creative audio problem solving, even in just this small time frame. Very spiffy. Thank you again for being here today. Thanks for having me. We've talked about audio and games today but the same math shows up in lots of other places. Transfer functions are a useful tool anywhere we want to model signal response, whether that's the effect of a voltage spike on an electric circuit, the vibration caused by a train passing near a building, or the blurring from the optics of a telescope. I think it's really cool that such an abstract concept as transfer functions can apply to so many things in the real world. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.